everyone, welcome to the 8th episode of the All Day Show with No Budget with me, Jason Leong. Now after the change in government, a lot of GLCs also changed their leaderships, including Finas. Finas appointed this guy to the board of directors. Now here's the sad thing, this guy who is supposed to look after the future of films in Malaysia also directed the movie Badang, which performed so poorly in the box office despite a 2.2 million ringgit budget. What does 2.2 million ringgit get you? Check out these actual clips from the actual movie trailer. Padang semakin diperlukan. Menurut laporan dan tulis penduduk sekitar ibu kota berasa lega berikutan. He looks like he's wearing a Halloween costume and going trick or treating. Again, this is not a parody movie. It's an actual superhero movie, and I love making fun of this movie because it has Douglas Lim in it. Anu. But this new chief is nothing if not ambitious. In fact, he says that he dreams that one day a Malaysian film can be nominated for an Oscar. Now, it's great to have dreams, but it's time to wake up. It's good to know that the new chief is also a stand-up comedian because that's the funniest joke I've ever heard about the movie industry in Malaysia. When you talk about winning an Oscar, you're talking about not just one film. You're talking about a culture, an industry. Right now, a lot of actors are underpaid. Most of them have to bring their wardrobes on set to shoot. And there are a lot of unequal contracts when it comes to royalties and intellectual properties. Not to mention the biggest problem, which is the paralyzing censorship that cripples and inhibits movie making and art. In Malaysia, I heard you can make a couple kiss on screen. You can talk about political issues or social commentary. You can talk about prevalent issues like the LGBT community. Well, actually you can, as long as all your LGBT characters get struck by lightning and die. If this doesn't change, I'm worried about the future of films in Malaysia. Because Malaysia has so much talent when it comes to art making and movie making. I worry that one day we send a film for Oscar consideration and the film is something like this. Girl from the Kampong goes to the city, befriends a man who rapes her, but the man turns out to be a superhero wearing a Halloween costume who saves the world from a zombie apocalypse, started by a bunch of rogue cops who are always very emotional. And the girl, in the end, marries the rapist to make things right. But it turns out the girl was a ghost all along. What is the title of this movie? Jangan Pandang Badang Hantu Rogol Polis Imo Rindu. Speaking about controversies and the film industry, Riza Aziz. So this dude allegedly laundered a billion ringgit from 1MDB and was charged when Pakatan Harapan was in power. However, recently, the charges were dropped in exchange for him returning less than half of that 1 billion ringgit and he will probably not see a day in jail. Now many are upset but I'm not surprised. You see, a story like this reminds me of the fairy tales I read when I was a child. You know those fairy tales like Aesop fables with moral endings at the end? Do you remember? You don't remember? Okay, let me, let me read you a fairy tale, okay? Uh, this is from this book. Oh, sorry, let me, let me. This is my favorite book. Fairy Tales for Children, huh? okay? So, I'm going to read you a, a, a fairy tale. This is called The Farmer and Two Thieves, okay? Once upon a time, there lived a humble farmer. One day, a thief stole a chicken from his farm. The farmer caught the thief who said, Please, sir, my family is starving and my daughter will die if we don't eat. To which the farmer said, This is injustice. The king shall speak for us. Because in this kingdom, every farmer had very easy access uh, to the king. Uh, you just show up at the castle and then the king will be there and there will be a court hearing. A very efficient king. So the king laid his judgment. Yeah, the king also sits on every court case. Uh, very, even for petty theft. You shall be punished for thievery by being beheaded. Thence, forthwith, your body shall be drawn and quartered, so that none shall steal again. It's very violent for a children's book. The next year, another thief visited the farm. This time, he stole all the chickens, cattle, wheat and grain, and even the gold in the farmer's house. This farmer is actually quite fucking rich. Also, the farmer should have installed some security guards or alarm system, you know what I mean? CCTV. The farmer, devastated, pursued the thief, who then said, I have distributed your wealth all across the land. It shall be impossible to retrieve everything. However, 
I shall give you back half your belongings if you cease to chase me. The farmer had no choice, for winter is coming. Oh, familiar phrase. And his family would starve to death. And then he would have to steal from another farmer and that would have been very ironic. The farmer agreed and the thief ran away with half his wealth. Thus the moral of the story. If you steal, steal enough so that giving back half is more cost efficient for the claimant than seeing justice done in its entirety. Thus ends The Farmer and Two Thieves. A few weeks ago, there was a viral video showing a traffic cop chasing after an asshole driver in a Mercedes Benz. Now, there are a lot of things to unpack here. First, this cop is a brave hero. It's the fasting month and he's chasing after this driver on foot. Also, the guy recording this is awesome. He's probably on the bike recording on a smartphone, but his camera work is so smooth and so steady. He should be offered work on the set of the next Badang movie, Badang 2, Ma Aku Hijau. Also, I can't help but think that some American cops watching this will be like, the tire deserves to be shot because it's black. Controversy surrounds yet again the Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development. I like to call that ministry the Ministry of Magic because how the ministry doesn't spontaneously combust due to stupidity must be from witchcraft, wizardry or sorcery. In its latest guidelines, children of frontliners should not be sent to childcare centres but if they do get sent to childcare centres, they should be separated from other children. How do we reward frontliners who spend day after day sweating in PPEs trying their best to save our country from the brink of destruction? Treat them like lepers! Treat their children like lepers! Yeah, his father is a frontliner, later he get COVID-19, then he come near me, then I get COVID-19, yeah, I don't want to be near him, he's so disgusting, keep him away from me! That was my imitation of the adults working at the Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development who came up with those guidelines. After a lot of protests by doctors, there seems to be evidence of the ministry backtracking on that ridiculous guidelines. Now all we have to do is fight for doctors to have better pay, better career advancement and better working conditions and to remove the current minister of health because he is ridiculous. But never mind, let's not all do that. Instead what we should do is we should give them a round of applause. Okay, I'll give a round of applause. Round of applause. Everybody stand up, round of applause. Stand up, stand up, round of applause. So all the doctors watching this, you take that applause and uh, you buy a better house, invest in unit trust, buy a car or whatever, okay? Put it in EPF so that in the future when you're old, you can withdraw the applause from EPF and by then, the applause will have compounded interest like 5 to 6% per annum. Then you have a lot of applause and that will be enough for your retirement and your old age. So, and you can pay the bills with applause. You can eat the applause also. I get a lot of heat from cyber troopers who say that I'm a DAP supporter, I'm a DA pig, or that I'm a DAP comedian, if there ever was such a thing. And I don't blame that because I quite like some of the leaders from DAP, like Hannah Yo, Gobin Singh, Anthony Lo, Yo Ni Ching, Yo Ni Ching, sorry, Yo Bi Yin, and Tio Ni Ching, to name a few. So I don't blame the cyber troopers for saying that I'm a DAP supporter. I'm not, I just like good people with good ideas. But here's the thing, I found out there's an even better reason for DAP to be in government. You see, when the DAP is in government, they are too busy running the country. Now that the DAP is in opposition, they have a lot of free time. Free time to come up with this Raya video. It starts off okay. And then... I'm a very bad singer, I can't sing to save my life. But I don't think I'm as bad as this. It sounds like a bunch of dying cats meowing for food. I can finally say, without a hint of irony, Ini? Ini 
semua salah DAP. Anyway, with every episode of the All Day Show, I want to promote a local business and this time I want you to go check out on Instagram aged underscore my they sell really awesome vegetarian kimchi now let me tell you something i hate kimchi i despise kimchi but after tasting some kimchi from aged it's not bad take it from me a kimchi hater who finds this kimchi quite delicious go and check out aged underscore my on instagram on the 6th of june i'll be performing live stand up at the crack house comedy club online virtual live streaming whatever you call it stand up comedy show it's a paid show each virtual ticket is 21 ringgit you can get all the details on the links below go and check it out and support the local and regional comedy scene via the crack house comedy club and Another announcement, we, the Malaysian Association of Chinese Comedians, the MACC, comprising Douglas Lim, Kua Jian Han, Pun Chiu, and myself, we shot our comedy show last year at the HGH Convention Center in front of 1,600 people. And that show, which is one and a half hours long, will be shown on Astro On Demand for free if you're an Astro subscriber. So those of you who are Astro subscribers, get on Astro On Demand and you can watch our one and a half hour amazing live stand-up comedy show for free. Okay, enough of plugging. Thank you so much for watching this. I'll see you next time on the next episode of the All Day Show with no budget with me, Jason Leong. Bye-bye. Stay home, stay safe, take care. Wash your hands.